In today's video, I am going to be breaking down Robert Dillingham's basketball shooting form. If you're looking to shoot the basketball better, this is definitely a video that's going to help you. So really quickly, make sure to go check out my hardest basketball shooting workout down in the description below. And let's get down to Robert Dillingham and be able to see how he's able to shoot the ball so that you can shoot the ball better yourself. Okay, so from this one quick warm up shot what we're seeing is that he dips the ball down to his waist dipping the ball sometimes will give you almost like a backswing in golf where it lines up your shot and makes you a little bit more accurate however where people or some players will mess up is they will bring the ball up while they're dipping their body Robert Dillingham doesn't do that he's actually bringing the ball from his gather up into his set point while his body is going up while he's extending his knees and his hips. So you get most of your power from your legs, but also your lower back. You don't wanna change the power that you're shooting with when it comes to your arms when you start going deeper and deeper. The reason is because your arms are your aim. Your power comes from your back and your legs. Here we can see that his elbow and shoulder are also in line with the rim. And when he dips down, when he gets that ball and he dips, he's got his knees, hips, as well as shoulders all pointing in the same direction. He's, his knees do slightly come together, but they're all pointed in the same direction. And he's looking at the rim. That's an extremely important tip that a lot of players make a mistake on. And then when he releases, he has a straightforward flick with no thumb flick. He also understands that by going back towards his left side, as we see here, he's able to get his right shoulder and elbow in line with the rim much easier and also much quicker as well. If you're a right-handed shooter, always try to pull back towards the left side because you will have a faster shot. We can even see this here where he pushes off, plants the left foot, and then puts the right foot down. By getting that left foot down first and then planting his right foot, he's going to be able to get that right shoulder and elbow in line much faster, especially when it comes to defenders who are guarding him tight like this guy. And he's able to release nice and straight and he gets full extension on the elbow. That's another tip. A lot of players will not get full extension and will not hold their release, which will take away power from your shot. So if you find that your shot's always short, Record yourself and see if you're getting full extension. That could be just one small thing that you have to do to be able to shoot the basketball from further away. And then this is another great clip that we can look at. He has 90 degrees on his back and 90 degrees on his knees. This is going to give him a lot of power. If you dip your body too low, you're going to be actually taking away power. And if you don't dip your body far enough, at that point, you're not going to get enough power either. So that is a great tip that you can incorporate into your game. He also has, in my opinion, a two motion shot. The reason being is because when he goes up, that's his set point and he freezes there for one, two and three frames. So about three milliseconds. To some coaches, he would have a one, uh, shot, or a one motion shot instead of a two motion. But either way, it's a smooth shot. He has really good energy transfer. He's able to transfer the energy from his Achilles into his quads, into his lower back. They're all extending roughly at the same time. Now he doesn't fully extend his knees, but he does fully extend his elbow and his elbows above his forehead. And then when he does push off his left foot to go towards the right side, which is a really hard shot for a right-handed player to make, he's able to kick that right leg out so that he can get his right side in line with the basket, which is why he's able to make this shot. We do see that he gathers the ball roughly in the middle of his body because his body is facing away from the basket. Technically, some coaches may say he's gathering from the left side because the net's here, but his body is facing this way, which means that this is roughly in the middle of his body. He's going up the middle of his body and bringing it over towards his right shoulder. He gets a lot of angle on his elbow, and we can see that he does have a little bit of space between his palm and the ball. His set point is roughly to the right of his forehead, 
which is a massive angle on his elbow. That may be able to give him a little bit more power as well to the basket. We can actually see from this angle right here that his elbow has about a 37 degree angle instead of having a 90 degree angle as some shooting coaches will say that you should have. Now the difference between a 90-ish degree angle and a 40-ish degree angle is going to be shot speed. The more you bend your elbow, the greater distance you may be able to shoot, but it will decrease your chances of not getting blocked or getting, it'll increase your chances of getting blocked. Getting closer to 90 degree will be a faster release, but he doesn't have that issue right now anyways. And when we look at the drop that the ball has to the rim, it's about 40 to 42 degrees. In this clip, it's 41 degrees. And that is in line with what we need to be seeing from players. From about the three-point line, you want to see between roughly 41 to about 43 degrees, roughly 45, sometimes depending on the distance away from the basket. Now, the reason for this is because if it's too great of an arc, if it hits the rim, it's going to bounce out because there's so much gravity on that ball. If you go too short, too shallow on the shot, then it's going to be seeing more rim than net and you're going to miss. If you can get in that 41 to 43 degree range, then that drop is going to be perfect because it's not gonna to have too much gravity pushing it down to bounce it out of the rim. And it's going to be able to see a good amount of mesh to be able to get the shot made. I hope that this video helps you shoot the basketball better. If it does, hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you guys again next time. Make sure to go check out the hardest basketball shooting workout down in the description below.